What's going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through Tuesday tonight, Tuesday night's NBA slate. And I have to say, even though I ended up, I, I think I was even a, like a slight few dollar loser on the night. Felt good to have a winning night on DraftKings, at least, um, especially when I made some big mistakes. Uh, well, uh, not some uh, big mistakes, whatever. It happens. You know, there's variance in this game, but I'll, uh, we'll talk about it. Sheets, what you were going to bring up your lineup, but I wanted to talk a little bit about mine as well, because I, I ended up switch, doing a, a terrible switch from Devontae Graham to Jalen Suggs. Um, which again, I don't even hate myself for doing it. I made an also a nice switch over to Josh Richardson from Cam Reddish because that was what I was waiting for. I was waiting, I was going to play Richardson if McCollum was out. Once he was out, we did that. But uh, but I really cost myself a chance to maybe at least have a shot to win the tournament and maybe come in the top, you know, seven or eight um, of the the seven seventy seven. But I, I, you know, again, I, I, I admit, there was there was some confusion with Suggs. So basically, what happened was he was announced. They announced the starting lineup. And the NBA.com and RotoGrinders.com both got it wrong and said that, it, well, this is what I, they said it was. And, and on Twitter, it says confirm Magic starting lineup was with Jalen Suggs. So I thought if they decided, if they elected to start him versus bring him off the bench, I was looking forward to the extra seven, eight minutes and the closing. Anyway, uh, he didn't end up starting and ended up coming in until the end of the first quarter. It was just very confusing, but I thought I was getting a huge edge. So I, and I needed to get somebody below 10% of my lineup, I thought. So that's why I played Jalen Suggs, and it cost me uh, cost me a lot of money. But you know, move on. Um, overall, not not the worst night. Cheats, tell us about your night and show us your screen, dude. What about uh, Gordon Hayward? <laughs> yeah, I know the chalky Gordon Hayward. It was very frustrating. For me. All right, let me uh, let me pull this up. I got fi- uh, six in the uh, in the two fifty. I just played. I played one line up in that. I treat those as just like single entries. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I did have Josh Richardson. Um, so I played him there. And I had uh, Lalonzo Ball at 6%, which obviously was was really helpful. And uh, just pretty much the only the only real uh, – that was really the only non-chalky thing I really had, but him and Richardson. And that was, uh, that was plenty. And I, I like you. I mean, I had Lillard. Could have used a couple of more minutes out of him. But, but just between you and me, uh, uh, Bobby – like even if I even if I he was in for a couple more minutes, uh, shit, my money would have beaten me anyway because he had he had lowered also, so I would have gotten second at, at best. Um, but uh, yeah, so this was this was my success. Uh, we got a uh, somebody hit like a uh, oh this ZS Rand. Yeah, he had a late three out of Bradley Beal to to catch me for like an extra thousand at the end there. Um, but uh, Aside from that, yeah, I mean, not bad. Well, yeah, that was quite quite a performance by uh, what's his name yesterday? Uh, Kyrie Irving scored like twenty five points in the fourth quarter, or something like that. I don't know what he ended up with fantasy wise, but he played a very. I mean, I don't know if those two can can do it together, but they certainly they came roaring back in a really really great looking, really really cool like last seven minutes of that game to see uh, Luca and uh, and Kyrie just freaking just do their thing, and they just just came up a little short, but. Um, uh yeah that was pretty much my nba night yeah um it was a it's a nice lineup i mean i'm trying to look at it because i got it on my small screen right now but yeah i mean and that's what you needed to do last night was one of those nights where on a big slate even there was just a lot of good chalk and you had to try to find a place or two to get different um i tried the little i my, my secondary lineups had a lot of the lamello um i think i ended up with 35 percent of lamello and also 35 percent of trey because i was playing them basically as runbacks and it was how did trey do he had 52, nothing, yeah. nothing terrible, nothing great. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just a, one of those interesting slates. And we're now we're going to have to make some decisions on a much smaller slate and try to fight for hey. focus even more on being different. Hey, I got a question for you. Were you surprised with, um, now this is the 250. I, I was pretty surprised that Lillard was 40% owned. Um, I, I, I was not, I was, um, I, I got the, the sense that that was going to be the case. And if you think he's going to be 20% owned in the other ones in a, in a four max or something like that, he's always going to be about double that. Okay. So I, I wasn't that surprised. I think in general, the idea of Lillard at 11 K is like compared to Jokic and, and, and beat and all these guys, usually you want to be playing the other guys with a matchup, but not, not just a matchup against the Lakers, which was obviously premium. But I mean, it, it, it was getting to the point where I actually think that he was probably overowned, and it's weird to say because he actually had a good game and he would have had a lot more well, if they really needed him to. But at the same time, he made you know what did he make eight out of his first ten threes or eleven threes or whatever it was. I, th- I think I think really honestly I think honestly what ended up happening, Bobby, is the stuff we talked about all during the show yesterday is that is that the position eligibility 
of 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 wanting to play the two centers. Mm -hmm. um whatever like and, and and you need to play i guess a guard in there i guess i don't i don't know uh it's uh i i was just i was a little surprised I, I, you remember we, remember we talked about like if you want to play in b the problem was you'd have to lock him into the utility early so maybe yeah. that's what ended up happening so yeah, I actually, and then with the Jokic news Jokic went from one percent to 15 percent owned and right. then you had mark williams who was 64 percent. you had walker kessler who was 25 percent or whatever so all of these guys ended up getting owned enough to where most people use the utility for their for their center spot. Obviously, right. it worked out well for this guy with the Lillard move. Um, and there, were, I mean, it worked out well for you with this, in this case with, with the Lillard move. But there was a lot of ways you could have gone about it. You know what I mean? There's there, there 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 was there was a lot of ways to get things right last night. They were all within like twenty player decisions, like you know Colin Sexton or Taylor Horton Tucker kind of things. You know what I mean? Neither one of them were wrong. They're just you know what I mean? I don't know. It's just it was it was an interesting night. Um, you and Harden was in the winning one on that one. See, Harden, Harden was the one yeah. I was afraid was going to be low owned, and, and I wanted to play him. But honestly, I, I think that he just as often ends up with like forty five there than he does fifty five or whatever. I, I was happy we caught we caught Butler. Um, he had a nice game. Yeah, he also he was one assist away from a triple double as well. Yep, he definitely he, he, he that was one of those where he definitely did take it on his shoulders. You know what I mean from the very beginning. Dude, but for, but forty two percent. This is a rough tournament, I guess. Well, this is what you're, you got the chalk. I mean, it's not even the tournament. It's just the slate. Like, there was such obvious chalk. I guess so. I didn't expect them to be that chalky, though. That's, um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and, and it just was one of those one of those crazy ones. Anthony Davis, and, and Anthony Davis, by the way, also would have smashed if he got his extra run, his last eight-minute run, because he uh, he was at 53 also and would have, you know, he was going to have, what, 25 and 25. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, all right, we'll move on to tonight. It's a smaller slate, a lot more. Um, Sheets obviously already has stuff going on. And, uh, and then the other stuff. See, do you want to record golf tomorrow, by the way? Is that what we were going to do? Yes, but we have to do it at the right time. I have, okay. I have a thing in the morning. Let um, me know, and I'll, I'll figure it out with you. Yes. Um, all right, so let's jump into it to, to, to tonight. Um, overall look is that th there is absolutely nothing that I feel is a complete necessity at first look, um, which is different than yesterday, because I felt like that about 19 things, which is obviously not possible. But we're going to have to figure out the Boston situation is going to be number one, I think. And that's going to be, you know, depending on what you're looking at, I guess you got Orlando first. So we'll do Orlando, Toronto. But Boston is going to be a big piece of uh, news today. So with everything I said, I'll, I'll, I'll just start real quickly with Orlando, Toronto. Um, I'm going to play Jalen Suggs again tonight. <laughs> I, I, I really think that and, I, and I'm and I'm curious because I'm, I, I, my guess is. On the back-to-back, -back, they, they've, they've done a few weird things. Harris has missed a few games lately. He's projected to play tonight. I still think Suggs plays enough minutes. I don't care that he, his usage was 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 lousy and his numbers have been lousy lately. I still think 3,700 is reasonable for him. I, I hope he's not too chalky by the end of that. I know he's looking really chalky right now. But I do like Suggs. And then you have all of the reasonably priced uh, Orlando Magic that – no one really stands out individually, but I'm just going to say that like Franz, Franz Wagner under 6K, I might just get on board that and just play that consistently. You could sort of make the same argument for Paolo below 7,500. The problem is they just have all their guys healthy, but the matchup is is tough. Um, but if, if they stay in those in this game, they're going to need those guys. So right now I've got Suggs as my only core play from this game, um, but I certainly don't mind any of the other pieces from Orlando. And if I had to pick anybody from... The Toronto side of it, I think Scotty Barnes would be my favorite. Potentially, they could give Podol the run, especially against a big team. So I'm gonna I'm gonna probably wait till about six to, to or six, sorry, we'll be I'll be live at six thirty today because um, the, the lock is at seven thirty. Um, but I, I think that Podol and Barnes are both reasonable. But nothing I feel like I need to do. Do you have any strong takes on this one, Sheets? No, um, it's funny you you mentioned the Boston stuff. Um, and I mean, it's funny. I didn't even notice what I was going to say going into the uh, analysis, but there's not you know, too much value on the slate and you probably do middling, but then I might look at my projections and I think my projections are just, are just not accounting for the possibility that all these Boston guys are going to be out. Um, so, so if that's the case, then there is going to be value opening up. Nonetheless, I, I don't really have too much in this Orlando game at all. Um, uh Wendell Carter Jr. 5700 Jalen Suggs 3700 I guess but it's not like he's projecting that great um so I'm probably Siakam maybe my favorite yeah Siakam is Fred Van Vliet 9200 yep 
yeah, I, I, I don't know if I can do that. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll just be off of this. Yeah, I, I may revisit this one later because if it's close, I think that one of these guys from Toronto is going to just completely smash. And maybe maybe the answer is just sometimes when we feel like that, just to play Siakam. I don't know, um, especially with the prices of everybody else. All right, let's move on to uh, to Boston and Milwaukee. Sheets, talk about this early from my projection because we still we still have Robert Williams questionable, Grant Williams questionable, Malcolm Brogdon's probable, so I think he's going to – assuming he's playing right now and he's going to be one of the better plays – but with no Jalen Brown, with I mean, they're, they're missing a, a number of pieces already. Um, they did just add Muscala, which could muck things up a little bit. Um, but really, it's going to – I mean, it's hard to analyze with not knowing what these guys are going to do because – Well, we have Tatum doubtful, right? So – Yeah, yeah Tatum, I have Tatum, I have Tatum still as questionable, but yeah. No, right. I have him doubtful. I think, like I think it's very unlikely that he plays. Yeah, I have him officially doubtful, actually, and Saberson projecting him at zero. Um, okay, so – this is getting frustrating to me when this and, – and by the way, the NBA is going to start getting pissed off about this too. You can't just have all your players out every time the two great teams play. You know what I mean? When, right. Philly, when Philly played them before Milwaukee, they, they sat every – like it's just – don't – stop doing this. So are they going to sit Giannis? No, I don't think – I don't think Milwaukee's going to play back at it. I just think that it's – Boston's not like showing their hand early in the season. And we've seen this before in the past, and it's the exact opposite of what should be happening in the NBA. So – Really annoyed by it. Um, basically, without it, without Tatum and I mean, so Brogdon is is like priority one. I think, I think priority two would be probably Derek White or Hor- Horford. What um, what's what's the spread in this game? Like fifteen? I mean, what what? It's it's an eight and a half. I mean, how, how is how is Boston competing in this game with with Brown and Tatum out on the road? It's on the road. road. It's a good question. Um, culture? I don't know. I don't know what to say. Maybe Larry Bird will come back or something. Delta culture. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It is a little weird that the, the line isn't isn't a bit higher. But I mean, they, they, these guys are tough. They're they're they're, they're, they're they compete. Um, it's it's just hard to weigh because if, if the I mean, even with with the, those guys out, like everybody's a good play. I mean, in order, I have it. Brogdon, and this is not in terms of point per dollar order. These are the guys I'm most likely to to want to play because of this. Um, Brogdon, Derek White, Al Horford, and then you mix in the Housers, Grant Williams if he plays, Robert Williams if he plays, Peyton Pritchard. Um, I think it's being a little bit under projected actually. So you, you're going to have like um, like two or three guys from Boston, I think, on every lineup if they'll slate locked right now, maybe even more. Um, how do you treat this situation? I, I, those are the guys who I'm rolling with. What are you doing here? Ah. Uh... Kind of inclined to to play blowout guys. I don't know. Um, as far as projections go, yeah, I guess Brogdon, uh, Derek White, Robert Williams, Hauser. I mean, the guys that you mentioned. I mean, uh, I guess these are going to be the values of the day. Um, but they don't they don't look that great. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know what I want to do here, honestly. Um, I mean, I guess the real question is, do you want to play Giannis or not? Um, is that a real question? I mean, it's fine. It's total. Obviously, it's a. He's twelve. He's twelve seven. Maybe playing three quarters. Right. I, I still am not as locked in on this fully just blowout thing, and also he still they he, they still play him up twenty in the fourth most of the time. Okay. Um, early on in the fourth, but yeah, I hear you. Like. Drew Holiday's price is probably a little too cheap as a run back. It'd be nice to have a run back because you've got a lot of stuff. I mean, what you could do as a semi blowout ish type thing, because Middleton's not getting like extra run, but he'll get extra usage if his other guys are off the court and they're going to play him as 24 to 28 minutes, no matter what, I think. Um, you'd think at some point he starts getting a little bit high. His minutes start ticking back up again. Right now they've kept him in that 24 range. He's actually the guy who I think is kind of an interesting tournament play um, Middleton on the other side, but it's mostly going to be the Boston guys. It's really hard to find a Milwaukee play that you feel really comfortable with. Um, I think Holiday, Giannis are the, probably the two best ones. Um, but Grayson Allen, Chris Middleton, Joe Ingle, I just don't need to play those guys on this slate. I think I'm going to stick with Boston, um, with Brogdon, Derek White, Horford, some mix of those. And then uh, 
then maybe maybe one of the other fringe pieces. But I, I do think it's looking like two or three from Boston minimum. Tell you the only thing that's worse worse karma than playing um, than playing DFS on like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is playing is playing DFS on on, on Valentine's Day. Oh right, I, right, right. Um, so I'm probably not not. I mean, if I play anything, I'll just pull up like one lineup in or something like that, so I don't have to look at it. Yeah, uh, there's, there's no universe that I, I'm going to play Giannis tonight. I mean, I just I just can't do that. I can't play twelve seven with 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 blowout risk. I just can't do it. So. Yeah. That, that's that's my that's my that's my take my that's my very very I guess obvious take I guess yeah I don't think I mean I actually have a sort of a, the opposite take because I, I just don't think anybody's going to play him so I, in that case I probably will well fair enough and, and and like you said also like if you do like the Boston guys yeah go ahead and play four of them with 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 Giannis on the run back and, mm-hmm. and, and hope they keep it close that that's certainly reasonable yeah and that that's that's something I'm definitely considering for tonight that's also a way you can get to Valentine's Day dinner early. And you don't have to worry about the rest of the slate. <laughs> Something like that. Well, that, that for those for those of us that are on the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, I guess it wouldn't be early for you. It would be late early for me. Um, but you New Yorkers eat, eat dinner and stuff like that later than we do anyway. Um, all right, let's move over to uh, Sacramento Phoenix. Um, Sheets, what do you got for this one? Because I have a lot of a lot of question marks with a lot of guys who are going to be popular. <laughs> I got DeAndre Ayton back in the back in the projection mix. Uh, I like him. Uh, Chris Paul's cheap enough, seventy seven hundred. So on the Phoenix side, I kind of like those two. And then um, Sabonis is actually pretty reasonable, I think, at ninety six hundred. Uh, and I think Fox. I think all these guys are are pretty pretty good. Um, I don't really see much in the in the value range though. I mean. Uh, Kogi, not really. Saban Lee, I guess you could play Saban Lee, but I think the Boston guys in the end are going to be uh, are going to be uh, are going to be pretty good values. But I'll go with the middling guys. I think I'll go with 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 uh, Sabonis. I'll go with 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 Paul. I'll go with um, and I'll go with uh, who the hell and, and Aiton. Yeah. Um... I'm kind of actually surprised by the same in lead projection just because with Devin Booker back and everything, um, I think he's projecting a little better than I would have guessed considering that he hasn't hit this number even without these guys. So it's a little weird. And they also added TJ Warren, who I think that's actually going to be a big pickup for them, even though I know they have Durant and everything coming, but that's like a really TJ Warren. If you can, I mean, like if you can make him your seven man or whatever, your six or seven man on your team here, you're, you have a really good basketball team um, or you're really deep. I, I, I'm sort of hesitant. I, I, I've been really impressed and I've loved playing the Kobe lately, but I'm a little hesitant at 4,600 with Booker back. And um, I'm open to it though. Uh, it's just, it feels a little bit like, um, I don't even think he's getting over projected. I just think people see the game logs and they get all excited because he's putting up thirties and forties and all that. Um, I'm not sure that's going to be the same thing tonight. I'm not sure he's that much better of a play than TJ Warren is to be honest with you. So I actually think my favorite play from this game, it might be a gamble. I might just say F it and play Devin Booker as my spend up. Uh, at some point, the minutes will come back. Uh, you know, he's coming back from an injury. They don't need to rush him. It's a big game for them. And Devin Booker, you know, being projected right now to play 35 minutes. If Devin Booker is playing 35 minutes, his usage rate has been like, even with Chris Paul was well in the thirties, like not quite Luca and those guys numbers, but pretty close. Um, not not to Luca, but to the to basically everybody other than Luca this season, he his his usage was was way up there. So I I like the idea of a low owned Devin Booker in a great matchup, and then in, and then it kind of makes me want to force in a spend up on the other side. Like you said, you could do the Giannis thing in the other game, but this feels like maybe you know you get you, you stack up the, the 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 cheap pieces from Boston, you play the maybe one of the guys from Orlando, uh, consider somebody from Toronto, and then you then you go with the. Uh, with the the, the, the spend-ups from here, and that's playing either Sabonis or uh, De'Aaron Fox with uh, with Booker. I kind of like that. Yeah. Any interest in that? Yeah, I like the mid. I, I like the mid range in general. Um, I don't know if I can get to what's Booker ninety something ninety four. It's fair enough. Yeah, I guess it's fair enough. I think I'm. I think I'm gonna put. I think I'm gonna be more into more of the sevens, like the Derek White you mentioned before, uh, Chris Paul, Chris Paul uh, yeah. Drew Holiday, maybe. 
you know, it was reasonable. Like you mentioned the Orlando guy. I didn't really look at him before, but 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 Banchero at 7,200. Because um, mm -hmm. it's funny, like as, as, as much as these Boston guys are supposed to look like great values, they're just, they're just not. I don't know. It's weird. They did price him up for what it's worth. At least okay. some like Derek White, 7,100. They priced up Sam Hauser and things like that. And uh, yeah, I think I think any of these Orlando guys are actually in play, but I I, I kind of like the idea of maybe taking a shot with a Sabonis and Booker. Um, that's something I'm definitely considering uh, early on today. All right, um, let's move over to uh, Washington, Portland. Uh, I got the I got Golden State Clippers first. Okay, okay Golden State Clippers. We'll do that one first. I presume that Clay is going to sit because um, he played 30, 36 minutes yesterday. That's yeah, just, certainly you think so. You would certainly think so. Um, so if he's out, then you know Jordan Poole becomes a better play. Uh, Jordan Poole is probably a decent play anyway. Yep. Uh, that's pretty much all you have on the Golden State side and on the Clippers. Um, I it's, it's, I think Paul George might be just a little bit too expensive for me uh, and and Kawhi. So it's probably just, again, a little middle. It looks like going to be one of those sheets middling builds. Uh, it's going to be Jordan Poole. It's going to be Jordan Poole sees with all these other 7Ks and hope for 280 to win the win the slate. You know, that's that's going to be, I think, the way I'm going to go. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm obviously, even if Clay plays, I'm still very interested in Jordan Poole. I'm interested in Kevin, come on, Looney. Um, we got, they gave him the starting job back in the last game. I'm curious what they do again tonight. They did, you know, win that game. So... I think you probably – I actually think Looney at 4,100 on this small slate is, is pretty interesting. Um, so I, I do I do think that Looney is a, is a value that I'm definitely open to using, which is not on full slates in general for me, but I, I think that there's enough upside if they do start him here uh, on the back-to-back. -back. I'm curious to see what they do with all the other pieces, uh, the Draymond, the, the Wiggins. Certainly wouldn't be surprised to see them you know, rest multiple people. But as of right now, those are the guys – in. By the end of the day, we're probably talking about guys like Jonathan Kaminga as a play because they just don't tend to play these guys back-to-back -back nights hardly ever. Now, it's not very far they're going. They played at home, and now they're going to L.A., so it's not like a huge deal. Um, but I, 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 right now, it looks like Poole and Looney are my two favorites from Golden State. And on the Clippers side, um, I certainly think you can make an argument for Kawhi Leonard. I am probably off of the Clippers tonight, personally. Um, so Washington, Portland, the last game, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, we talked about this yesterday with respect to Portland, like the funny things they do to try to like do different stars and like give other guys shots. And, and last night's recipient was, of course, everybody's favorite, Matthias Teibel got the start and smashed at 0.1% ownership. Um, and, and nobody even noticed. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, he was 3K started and scored 34 fantasy points. Uh Who's it going to be tonight? I don't know. Probably not going to be him. It'll be somebody else. I don't know. But but, but watch for those little sneak starters. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, uh, Lillard uh, coming off of, you know, a Lillard game. I mean, he didn't have to play 40 minutes, like you were saying. Scored yeah. 42 fantasy points in the first half. Um, and then basically coasted. Yep. Um, I am... If I played, I'm I'm not gonna play. <laughs> Please don't play Thibel. I will you. Well, uh, well, you you won't have to play him because he's not gonna because well, he's probably not gonna start again. Well, if um, Jeremy Grant is out again, that's a that's a different story. Um, I think someone different. else starting. So. Yeah. It's, it's it, well, Cam Reddish would was supposed to start yesterday with Jeremy Grant, but now Thibel's projected to start, right. which is a little weird. So look, Thibel is a three and D guy. That's what he does. Uh, you're going to count on him either to hit a few shots or get steals and blocks. And that's how he's going to get there. He had three blocks last night and a steal. Um, and I certainly think that you could, you know, it's, it's a small slate. So he's, I'm not going to ignore I, him. I, for what, for what it's worth, I have Jeremy Grant in. So uh, yeah, he's projected. He's out last night though. Right. 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 Okay. So so, because you were talking about why Thibel also was. Oh him. yeah. So I think, first of all, I think the lower it is, Listen, I think he's perfectly reasonable play. I mean, he's at home. He's didn't have to play 40 minutes last night. Um, and there's there's point you're gonna need points tonight, I think. You know what I mean? Like uh, you don't want to play if you don't want to play play Giannis, you got there's gotta be points somewhere. 
and and I think that he's is, is he like really consistent now? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, is he like just good? For he's six? averaging thirty eight real life points a game over the last month and a half or whatever. Yeah. So but if you're consistent, think, you're scoring thirty eight a game. I mean, because you're, you're that's be a hell of a floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. Um, and if you look at his game log, like he had one bad game with twenty eight points. The problem is it, it's inc- more than it used to be. Even he's, I would say he's even somewhat more scoring reliant than he used to be. Because he does have some big assist games, but like you still have Simons who runs, the, you know, some of things in the backcourt who also gets a lot of assists. So I actually think that like I, I, I'm treating this a little bit like the Clippers, the you know, at first look, like, like sorry, like the Sun situation with Chris Paul or Devin Booker, Damian Lillard, or Anthony Simons. I'm kind of tempted not to play Lillard on the back to back. To be honest with you, I think he's going to be popular again. Um, it is another good matchup. So I, I, you know, Simons though is not getting you much off of any sort of chalk because he's going to have some ownership. Um, the guys you can get low ownership with here are going to be Watford and Eubanks, who do have upside, um, even though it's it's sort of like evened out between the, the two of them. I, I would t- I would consider taking shots on those guys, especially if Jeremy grants out again, um, which will also bring in guys like Nas Reed and and uh, obviously make Thibel a stronger play if Jeremy Grant is out again. Um, hey, you know, he's pretty athletic, by the way. The guy you you, uh, you mentioned yesterday, I was watching the game, obviously. I was sweating mm-hmm. Yeah, sharp. Yeah, he's like one of the best athletes in the NBA. He's gonna be. He's yeah, gonna he's win. sick. He's, he's gonna sick. win the dunk contest. If you want, you want a sure bet, take him to win the dunk contest. He almost he he dunked one almost from freaking the foul line last night. Yeah, uh, he's like a whole different thing, huh? It was nuts. Um, um. By the way, good call. I don't know if you put that in your bets of the day, but for those of you that were listening yesterday, uh, Bobby uh, basically gave out Golden State as being too small of a favor over Washington last night. And they won uh, by 10 or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if all the guys are back from watch. By the way, Bradley Beal had a very, very nice game. Yeah. Uh, good for him. Uh, Kuzma is, well, he was out yesterday. I guess he could be back today. He, well, he did participate in the shoot around, which is interesting. But uh, I, I'm i pretty much off of the, the Washington side of this uh, on the back to back like that. Um, and Portland only three and a half point favorite. Maybe, maybe go back with them again. I don't know. Um, anyway. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Jer- Jeremy Grant. Uh, Jeremy Grant looks like a good, he's another mid ranger. He's a mid ranger that can play 42 minutes as well. Right. So, uh, could he play 42 minutes having sat out yesterday though? I mean, I think so because of the, the sitting because of the back to back possibly. That's 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 possible. But he sat because of what? What did he have? He had a oh concussion protocol. Oh, he can play. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he should be good. He should be good to go if if he's good to go. <laughs> um, of course. <laughs> and and I think for what it's worth, I think Jeremy Grant is going to be. A, I think he's a good play. And I think. I mean, his projection is like on Saber Sim is crazy. So he's like looking like the second best play on the slate. Um, so he might end up being really popular. You, it's, you know. It's, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say this. Is a, it's a game you might want to force in a Washington just because of the game environment um, uh, and, and the game may stay close. But it's hard to find what to do when Beal, Kuzma, and Porzingis all play. For what it's worth, even when you know Kuzma's mostly been out, but Beal's been over 40 fantasy points, I think, in five games in a row. He's yeah, actually looking a little bit more like the old Beal. And, and tonight is a night where I think you can get a lot, get away with you know your five and a half X's from some of your spend up. It's not like we have these – these guys in just these crazy smash spots. Lillard's not projected for 65 fantasy points or anything. You know what I mean? So yeah. we don't have these automatic plays. And that's sort of what's leading me towards the get weird type of stuff. Like if Devin, if we believe Devin Book, I mean, if anybody believes Devin Booker could play 35 minutes tonight, I'm going to go with it. I think that's what I'm going to do is, is play, get pieces of the Sacramento Phoenix. But, but I like the Booker part on the, on the other side. And I like the idea of getting to, Maybe Sabonis and Harrison Barnes. I mean, it's a small slate, so I, I, I'm much more open to playing guys like Harrison Barnes, Kevin Herter on these kind of slates than I am on big slates. And even a guy like Keegan Murray, who's got a wide range of outcomes, he's 5K, and we've seen him have some really, really big games. He's another kind of guy you could use in a little bit of a mini game stack. So that's that's something I'm considering trying to do um, to go along with the Boston value. That's basically my my early stuff. And I do like Suggs tonight. I think he bounces back and has like it is over 20 fantasy points somewhere in the in the low 20s which is good enough at 3700 on this slate yeah i think that um now that i'm thinking about it maybe you're, you're the booker play is uh i mean how, how do you find a low-owned guy with with a lot of upside um 
I think Booker's a good candidate. You know, like Lillard, like you said, I mean, Lillard's going to Lillard's gonna get smashed, I think, again tonight. Um, yeah. And he doesn't, he didn't have to outscore Booker, although. Right, there's plenty of worlds where Booker outscores him. Yeah. I and mean, if Booker's even close, you're way ahead of the field because you have saved yourself that extra 1,700. That's true. So. I'd be careful with the, maybe, I was about to say be careful with the Boston stuff, but. They're going to have to, I mean, they're going to try to win, right? Are they got to play? I mean, you're going to get Derek White and all these guys playing a bunch of minutes to try. And you do have, and this, listen, I, I keep saying this, and I don't think it's ever actually worked, but I'll just say it again. Um, Brogdon going back to Milwaukee, right? Didn't he play in Milwaukee? Yeah. And I think, and I, and I, I think he is, I think he's a really good play anyway. So I'll take the extra. Yeah. Little bit Cause he's could be like very, like the least vengeful player in like the, in the United States. Although he did, he did smash when they played Indiana out of the blue. Okay. There it is. Okay. It is. It's pretty amazing when you watch this over and over again. How many times the guys on their former teams, and it's not always just revenge. A lot. We 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 use the word revenge, but a lot of it's familiarity. You've played with the yeah. other guys. You feel like you're just. You know what I mean? You feel like it's sort of your team rather than. Team me, meanwhile, players. what's his name did pretty nicely the other day. He didn't like smash, but he did well enough. We had the Rozier did get six X out of. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, he scored like forty something, I think, which was uh, on, yeah, on other slates might have been good enough. No, you're right. And it, and it was, I thought it was a really good call by you. Um, anyway, guys, I will be live at 630 Eastern. Uh, join us then. Please like and subscribe and all that jazz. Um, good luck tonight, everybody. We'll have a golf video out tomorrow along with basketball. And uh, let's make some money.